Hi, this is Stuart Knockbar with Educated Quest. With me today is Jen Ann Pedanti. She works at New College of Florida, a very unique school. It is a public honors college for the Sunshine State. It has also been one of the colleges that changed lives since there were colleges that changed lives back in 1996. And it, there have been multiple editions of that book. You should buy it at a bookstore. And New College has been one of those schools each time that book came out. And I hope when, as Jen Ann and I talk, you'll learn more about why. So Jen Ann, thank you for uh, chatting with me this afternoon. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited for the opportunity to speak more about New College. And you're, are you an alum of the school? Yes, I am an alum of the school. I graduated in 2017. When I was at New College, I studied biological psychology, which was not something that I ever would have known about at any other university. But I got to do a lot of animal behavior while I was here. And I trained dolphins. I built prosthetic legs for cranes. I had lots of opportunities at New College that I wouldn't have had at any other university. So did when you started at New College, was that your intention academically or did or did you learn so many things that you changed your mind? I don't, it was a journey. I definitely came in with the um, idea that I was going to do marine biology. I sp specifically wanted to study, you know, the biology of dolphins, the biology of cephalopods. And while I started learning more about the biologies at New College, I learned that biological psychology was an option for me. And I learned that I could study animal behavior, which I thought was so fascinating. So that was something that I learned through the help of my professors, through you know, taking courses that were outside of my comfort zone and taking risks. So the kinds of students that you look for, when you're reviewing an application, you're a much smaller school. Mm -hmm. um, how do you review it differently than say uh, Eckert might? which is a small right. school and also a college that changed lives and a, a Florida Southern, like a mid-sized school. How would your, you and your team review a student a little differently than other schools would? We take a very holistic approach to the way that we review applications at New College. And I think that that's really important because we also take a very holistic approach to how we review our students when they're here too academically. So something that's very unique about New College is instead of you know, offering an A through F grading scale, we evaluate students on narrative evaluations, which really talks about the student as a whole. So when we're reviewing applications, we look at the student as a whole as well. How we'd like to see students who are challenging themselves. We like to, because we are an honors college, we do like to see that students can perform at the honors level or that the student has you know, grown and developed in their coursework and take in challenges or have, you know, if they were struggling in the past academically, they've grown and they've gotten stronger as a student. We like to see students who are also involved, you know, either in their community or in school. That doesn't mean that they need to take on a million extracurricular activities, but we like to see the commitment in extracurricular activities as well. And we also look for students who um, definitely are you know, interested in learning more. And because we are a small college, these students we look for are students who like to take charge of their own education, who like to have more of a say in their own education because we really do focus on the individual at New College. And that is why we take a very holistic approach to the review of applicants. Now, being that, that it's a small school, every mm -hmm. student will get to know their teachers. Um, do teacher recommendations help? Teacher recommendations absolutely do help. Uh, this year, our teacher recommendations were optional. So if a student wanted to have a counselor or teacher submit a recommendation on their behalf, it was something that we would review, but it wasn't something that was really a deciding factor. Um, a lot of the times we do like to see, you know, what a teacher or a counselor has to say about a student, you know, especially if they have in the past struggled academically or we see some kind of um, 
you know, issue that a student has had in their application process, we like to hear from those teachers and counselors because they can really vouch for those students and they can talk about the student's journey. So it's just another piece of information and the more information we can get about a student, the better. Now, is intended major important? Not necessarily, because we are a liberal arts college. Um, our students really are here to, you know, explore their academics. If they already know what they want to do, that's excellent. We can help you, you know, get started, foot in the door as soon as you're here. And your academic advisor will help you do that, as well as your career coach. Um, that's something that's very unique about New College is we pair our students with not only an academic advisor, but a career coach. But there's lots of students who come in here who either don't know what they want to do um, and are interested in exploring their options and their academic advisor can help, you know, navigate them through those options. Or they come in and they think that they're going to do, let's say, philosophy. I have a, a really good friend of mine who's an alum was really interested in philosophy. And when he left high school, he said, I'm never taking another math course again. <laughs> and now he came to New College, he took a bunch of math courses, he even built one of his own math classes, and now he's a data scientist. Oh, so wow. really it is a journey. And we encourage our students to take classes that are outside of their comfort zone and discover what they really are interested in. And if, if they ask for a teacher recommendation, does it have to be, like one thing I did notice when I was in high school, people mm -hmm. knew their music teacher better, or they knew a coach. Right. better than they knew the classroom teachers because if you were like in band for four years uh -huh. or you were in chorus for four years or you were on a team that teacher knew you better than anybody in a classroom setting yeah. would, would know you and and are those viewed uh as well within the process yeah we do really like to see um i'm sorry we do really like to see recommendations from teachers because they can talk about what your academic uh, growth and what your academic skills are. But if you are a student who is you know, looking to go into the arts or looking to go into music, and that's really what you're interested in pursuing, I would recommend that take advantage of those like arts and music teachers to give you recommendations. If they really know you and they can vouch for your worth and vouch for your growth, I would absolutely take advantage of those, but maybe also include another recommendation from a counselor or from an academic teacher as well. Now on the website, it said essay is optional. Is that mm -hmm. true for the coming academic year too? Uh, for the past two years, our essays have been optional. Right now we are discussing including the essay as part of the application. And it's very likely that we will include some kind of personal statement or essay Okay. in the application process this upcoming year because I, I would think that as you said you want people to give as much information mm -hmm. about yourself that's especially if it's positive than uh, as little information than, than very little information right i think a lot of that had to do with you know the pandemic and the pandemic's effects okay. on students' abilities to apply. We wanted to make the process as streamlined and, and simple as possible, because a lot of these students didn't have access to counselors or access to like third party counselors that could help them prepare for school. And in the middle of a pandemic, you're already so overwhelmed that we wanted to make it as simple as possible. That's why we did make that essay optional. And what did you learn from that? You, did you get the same students that you usually get? I think that, we did get a lot of the similar students. It was very difficult to reach those students because I think that a really big deciding factor when it comes to choosing a college is being able to come to that campus and being able to see yourself in that position as a student, see yourself on that campus as a student. That is so important when it comes to choosing a school, especially a new college, because we're in such a beautiful location. Uh, we have these amazing like historic buildings like the college hall that used to be part of the Ringling Brothers mansion. Uh, we're right on the bay. It's a beautiful place. You can come see our amazing marine science research center that has shark tanks underneath it. We have a research vessel. It really is the de deciding factor for a lot of students is seeing the campus in person. 
Now you're now people know you uh, in the in the Tampa metro area, mm -hmm. probably because you, you know the campus has always been there. Uh, how how far do you get the word out? How difficult is it to get the word out within Florida, which is a very big state, mm -hmm. and, and outside of Florida? Because I I, I live in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. About half of the high school graduates from New Jersey prefer to go to college out of state. Mm -hmm. And there are kids who are interested in liberal arts schools. Right. And they're very, uh, and a state like Pennsylvania, the private ones are very expensive. And I could see kids from New, and New Jersey, we have a beach. Yeah, you know, we're, <laughs> we're, we're on the Atlantic Ocean. We're on the mm -hmm. Atlantic Ocean. And I could see kids from New Jersey being you know very drawn to a uh, new college to new college um what do you do to reach out to people how do you find the student your students i think a lot of the ways that we find our students are through um, our reputation and word of mouth through our alums who are doing really amazing things through our students who are doing amazing things we have um x gonzalez who is an activist who just was on Jimmy Fallon and they were talking about how new college just changed their life. We have alums who go on to do amazing, impressive things and that makes an effect within the community. And our counselors are very loyal to us, especially when they see a student that is a very good fit for new college. Um, you know, something that is very different about new college, we're different than pretty much all the other universities in the state university system. We offer a very unique educational experience here. Uh, we add a lot of diversity to the state university system, which is really amazing. So it is unfortunate that a lot of it is through word of mouth and it is hard to compete with those big name schools. But if you're looking for an individualized education, you're looking for a lot of personalized attention and you wanna take charge of your own education, New College is the place for you. And a lot of those other universities or other colleges that offer those experiences are private colleges, are so much more expensive. But we can do that and also do it at the price of a public tuition, which is an amazing thing that, that we're able to do. Is there something that people from New Jersey that you might have talked to or Pennsylvania, uh, mm -hmm. New York, that they might have thought about Florida, that when they came on the campus or they met, they met you at a, a college fair or met your, any of your team, that they were wrong. They were wrong. Um, you know, we have in the past like had some kind of reputation of being like a a new agey like hippie type college. When we're really not, we do, you know, encourage our students to think forwardly, to take risks, to try new things. And so people will come here and think that, you know, we're, we're a bunch of hippies just hanging out in the sun in hammocks, but we have a lot of students who are really challenging themselves and doing amazing projects. So we're not just goofing off and, and being in the beautiful Florida sun on the beaches all day, we're actually, doing amazing work and challenging ourselves on this campus. Would you like to wear polos with like prints of palm trees and sharp and uh, marine life and things like that? <laughs> I would absolutely love to do that. Like I, I have um, a small shrimp aquarium on my desk that I, that I get to <laughs> stare at, but then I also have these beautiful French doors that I can just look out onto the bay all day. Um, in the past, actually, I think it was two years ago, our student ambassadors who work in our admissions department had like Hawaiian shirts. They were like blue and had palm trees all over them. It said new college. So we do embrace a little bit of that like tropical Florida nature to us, but we are really hardworking. We like to work hard, but we also like to enjoy ourselves too. Well, it's really interesting. You have an interesting location mm -hmm. and it's surrounded by water. <laughs> and I would imagine, like I said, people who come from places they don't live immediately near water are thinking, wow, I get to go to college. Do, you, do they ever ask you, gee, do you guys study here? Yeah, sometimes people will, <laughs> you know, come and they really just are in disbelief. And then we also have the parents who come, you know, and their kids are so excited. And they're like, oh, man, I wish I was a student again. I want to come here because it's a beautiful place to learn, especially if you're up north. 
and you're interested in marine biology or you're interested in the environmental studies or you're interested in the arts or the music, uh, Sarasota is the bustling place for all of those things. We're an amazing arts district. Uh, there's a lot of performing arts going on around us. There's a lot of visual arts going on around us. We're right next door to the Ringling Museum of the Arts. We're right on the bay. We have a shark research vessel that goes out. We're in the middle right now of building a dock for the shark research vessel and for our sail club team. So, you know, this is really great for those students who are up north who don't have those opportunities there uh, because we do also offer very generous out of state scholarships as well. And, and what share of a freshman class will receive some kind? Because Florida, your, your base rate is fairly low, mm -hmm. especially for people from Florida. Mm -hmm. um, what share of a, a freshman class has some kind of scholarship to help them cover the cost? About 96% of our incoming students receive some form of financial aid. Um, the really nice thing about our financial aid application process is it's tied to the application. So if you are applying and you complete your FAFSA and you complete, uh, you get all of your materials in on time, that doubles as an application for financial aid scholarships for us. Um, and usually about 96% of the students receive some form of financial aid. We have what we call our scholarship guarantee, which is for our Florida freshmen. That's anywhere from a thousand to 3000 a year that is uh, in the past, it was based on a combination of GPA and SAT, ACT, but this last year, especially due to the pandemic and COVID, we based it solely off of GPA. And then we also have our presidential scholarship, which is for our out-of-state uh, freshmen, and I think that's around, I want to say, 10,000, and that's uh -huh. also tied to the application process. That would that would be make it price competitive with a lot of state in-state for for here because it's expensive exactly here. and that's what our goal is with that scholarship and do i imagine most of the kids come from florida yes um from when you look at other places do you pull more from other countries do you pull more from neighboring states do you pull more from there's no pattern at all they just found out about you and they, um, they were on we your do doorstep? have some like hot spots around the united states i i wouldn't know from like um out of the country. But we do have students uh, from Texas. We have a lot of uh, interests from Texas. We have interests in Georgia, Illinois, um, New York, uh, like New Jersey, uh, especially like those up north states where, you know, students don't have access to the water or students are cold and <laughs> really want to relocate to a, a tropical place that is also very affordable for them to study at. This is a great place for them. Now, do do students um, anywhere, do they look at it versus a public honors college within a larger university? Can you repeat that question? In other words, like like the University of Florida, they have an honors college. Yes. So does Florida State, so mm -hmm. does Florida Atlantic. They have one in Jupiter. Um, right. that yeah. it's, that's free that's on its own campus, actually. Um, do do your applicants look at the public honors college at the larger school? Um, I'm a little uncertain. There's a common misconception among a lot of students that we see who actually think that we're not even a public university. They think that we're a private university. Like it's, it's almost that we're too good to be true. You know, um, that small individualized education at that public tuition um, price is almost too, too good to believe. But we are our own independent school. We are not connected to any other school. Um, in the past, we were part of USF Sarasota Manatee, and that was about, I want to say, 60 or so years ago. So we have been an independent school for a very long time, and we will continue to do so and continue to grow. Uh, we have now developed a master's program, a graduate program, I'm sorry, for a new college, and it's a master's in data science. Mm -hmm. So that's a new development in the last few years, and we're hoping to grow our graduate programs more and grow our academic programs for undergraduate as well. Now you entered in 2013 when you yes. started. Mm -hmm. Now, are there new majors that have been added besides the data science program, new majors that have been added since you started school there? Absolutely. 
um, you know, yearly, because we give our students a lot of say in their own education here, it's possible for students to come up with their own majors. Like it's definitely possible for them to combine uh, different majors and leave with their bachelors of the arts in those majors. Biological psychology was just starting up when I came into college. And that's really like blossomed as a program. There's a lot of more animal behavior professors. I had a friend who graduated who did Spanish language and music, and he combined that into his own uh, academic program. So because we do allow students to really specialize their own education if they wish to, I mean, we absolutely already have academic pathways in these established majors. But if a student knows what they want to do and they want to pursue that, we make it very easy for them to do that. And they can create their own major doing that. Like I mentioned, uh, X Gonzalez earlier, who was on Jimmy Fallon, X is actually majoring, I think, in, in activism. So that's not really a, a major at any other college, but because X knew what they wanted to do when they came in here and they've really developed as a person, they were able to, with the help of their professors, create that own major. Uh, it's not something that every student has to do, but if you want to, we're gonna make that a possibility. Well, I would imagine like New College didn't offer data science back in you know, the USF days and probably <laughs> might not have offered it more recently, but someone had to tell the faculty, look, we, you know, you might have to teach this. Did that direction come from like people had come off internships? Did it come off, did it come from alumni who said, we'd like to have people with these, this kind of skill? Did it come from the faculty saying, you know, we ought to advance this and, you know, we'll take the initiative ourselves. Mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot to think about adding a program to mm -hmm. a, particularly a small school where you're not gonna have a lot of people in any one major. Right. Um, yeah. How did how do people decide, okay, we're gonna have a data science pro major right. program. How do they decide that? Well, New College is a very interconnected community. We, uh, we seek out and we give a lot of feedback. We're very vocal in our own community. So it really is a collaborative effort between alums, professors, staff, current students because we are so small, you know, we have that seven to one student to faculty ratio. The professors hear a lot of feedback from students. They uh, form really tight connections. They have opportunities to collaborate on research. They listen to the students. You know, the students have the ability to create their own major. Some of the students decide to create some of their own courses. So there is a lot of feedback involved in that. And when, you know, that community is so close knit and we listen to each other so much. That's where, you know, we see what needs need to be addressed and where we can grow as a college. And I think that's really where the data science program came from was because the professors and the students acknowledged, you know, the need and desire to meet those um, demands of future students and current students. How, how was it when you were going through your first first narrative evaluation with, with a class? Well, um, you know, I had some really great narrative evaluations and then I, I've also had some um, pretty critical narrative evaluations, like at points. I always did really good when I was in, in school, but you know, you, you get that one professor who will you know, say that, that one thing that gets to you, but then praise you through the rest of the narr narrative evaluation. I got a professor who mentioned that I had garbled a concept on one exam and I still oh. haven't forgotten that. But then he like talked about how great I had done on all of my other projects there. But the, the beauty of the narrative evaluation is that it gives the students much more feedback about where they are academically and how they can improve as well as, you know, suggestions for what to pursue in the future. Uh, that's so much more than a number or a letter would ever provide to a student. So yes, we do mark these students on their coursework as either satisfactory or unsatisfactory, but that professor will follow up with a narrative evaluation that tells you in depth, what was the syllabus of the class? What did you do in that course, like as a whole class? And then how did you perform individually? How have you grown as a person? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? That really is so pivotal in um, building students into, you know, adults um, into into their like passions. It really guides them 
into finding their niche and now when, also helps them grow. Now, when employers or graduate schools or professional schools, they ask for grades, yes. what does the college give them? Do they give them every narrative evaluation from every class they took? Do they, give um, them, do they have grades? How do, they, how do they handle that? So typically when our students go on to uh, apply to graduate programs or other programs, we will tell the students uh, when it comes to GPA, what you would do is you would just put like 9.99999. We call it just nining out the GPA. <laughs> and usually that that raises a flag with the university and they, they look at the student's application, they see, oh, that's new college. Now we may not have the biggest reputation within like word of mouth from, from parents and, and um, high school teachers, but in higher education, they know us. And we do produce really impressive graduates. So they're familiar with us and they know the process of what we do is we send a narrative evaluation packet. The great thing about the narrative evaluation packet is any course that a student has taken that they were unsatisfactory in is not included in their narrative evaluation packet that we send on. That's amazing because that encourages students to take classes that are outside of their comfort zone. So if you're here and, and you're a philosophy AOC and uh, you wanna take some of those math classes, see how you fare, if for some reason, you know, that didn't go well, that's fine. We can we can sweep that under the rug. We can move past that and find something else that you know you're passionate about. Or you can keep going that philosophy course. But you know what? Maybe you discovered that you do love math and that's life-changing for you. So the narrative evaluations really help the students um, for graduate programs to show their best self and their best work. Do they help someone who's a current student applying or a very recent grad more than they might help somebody who's like out of college five years and now they're getting thinking about going to grad school and some of the faculty that might have taught them might have left? Right. Um, you know, the, the thing about New College is because it is such a tight knit community, there's a lot of support networks. Um, even if they're not directly in person in the school, we have Facebook groups. I know that our alums are still, you know, creating Facebook groups that are looking out for other alums. We have a, an alum Facebook group that just speaks about job opportunities. And um, so we really look out for our community, but we also have um, the professors. You can reach out to an old professor, send them an email, and they can connect you with someone within the community. Something that has really changed recently uh, that prepares our students uh, rather than, you know, having to come back and ask to be prepared for, for um, work in life. We are preparing them from day one with, with our career and engagement and opportunity center. So we have those internship opportunities. We do, um, we help students prepare for interviews. We have a professional uh, closed closet. So if a student is going for an internship opportunity or a interview at a job, they have an outfit if they need to. Their career coach is gonna help them make those connections in their time at New College rather than you know leaving with their degree and saying, what's next? They leave with their degree, they already made those connections. They already have those experiences under their belt. So they would have, they would have the career advisor for all four years. Mm -hmm. The faculty advisor, would that change after the student declares a major or they could they, could they keep the person that they were matched with freshman year? Well, typically we do have a survey that our students fill out as uh, uh, as admitted students that pairs them with an academic advisor that's gonna be closest to their interests. But if any time a student is really, you know, getting along with a professor is really like vibing with, with what is happening in a class or, or with a professor and it's so easy to reach out and say, hey, would you be my academic advisor? Because they get to know the professor so well. If you're in a 12 person class, that professor is going to know that you're not there. If you're in a 12 person class and you feel really connected to that professor and you think, wow, they have shared interests as me. Reach out to them. It's so easy to, to find an academic advisor that's going to fit your needs. Now, New College requires a thesis mm -hmm. and an exam. 
how many faculty advise on the thesis? Like when you do you defend it in front of one professor, more than one? Do you do the orals? There's like an oral exam. Mm -hmm. Do you do that in front of one professor or more than one? So uh, the thesis process is the final step in your education at New College. And I know it sounds really daunting, but there's been all of these experiences and all of these faculty members and staff members who are supporting you through this whole process of preparing you for that final step in your career at New College. The thesis is kind of like a, a life's work, you know, like a life's work while you're at New College that shows off all of those courses that you've worked on, shows off all of those projects you've worked on individually, shows off what your academic passion is. We want you to really delve deep into that. Um, so that usually takes on the form of a, a paper for some science students. It could be a research paper, could be a literary review. It could be for arts or performing arts students. It could be a performance. It could be an art exhibit um, that is then followed up with, with some kind of writing based um, project. And then after you've completed you know, your exhibit or your paper, you present it in front of a committee of your advisors. So typically it's about three professors on your committee. Usually it's your thesis sponsor and then two other professors that are in the same kind of field that your thesis is written in. Um, and then you just, you get to defend it in front of your professors. Your, your friends come, your family comes. It's just like this really, uh, relieving, exciting, tense moment, um, but you really get to show off your skills that you've developed while you're here. It's not as daunting as a, a graduate thesis. I know when we say thesis to students, like their eyes get big and it, it sounds scary, but it's really not. It's just like, it's, it's just like one, one large project and you have all of the resources and the support and they have been there for you the entire time. And it's so easy to reach out if you're um, overwhelmed or if you need assistance. And, and you work on that in the fall and spring of your senior year or just the spring? Typically, our students will declare uh, what their thesis is going to be their third year or their okay. um, second semester of their third year or their at least the second semester of their the year before their final year. So they'll do kind of like a, a rough draft declaration of what the, the topic is going to be. Sometimes that changes over summer. Sometimes it changes in the middle of the process. I know that certainly happened to me. Um, but you typically do work on it for that entire year, that fall and spring. If you're not a procrastinator, we, we do have some students who just cram it all in at, in spring break or something. Um, but yeah, it is, it's usually like a year's work. Sometimes students already know what they wanna do from the moment they, they come to, to campus and they've been working on it this entire time. Or it can be something that you collaborate on with a professor. A lot of our professors are still active in their areas of um, you know, study. So they're still doing research or they're still do producing work and you can collaborate with professors on those projects. Do do students often use like study abroad or like study away within another part of the United States to help them do the research or observe things to write a thesis? Yeah, we've had lots of students who have, have taken advantage of those study abroad opportunities um, to, to go on and, and do those projects. We've had students who've gone off to Antarctica. We've had students who've gone off and done coral research, I, I want to say in, in Peru, we've had students who have taken the advantage to go to, you know, I want to say it was Europe and they studied their family tree. So they traveled all around and then they wrote a paper on it. So there's lots of opportunities for our students to study abroad and we make it very accessible to our students uh, that's within the United States or outside of the country. So let's say I wanted to study Florida politics and I needed to get an internship in the legislature in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. The faculty might help with that. They might talk about an issue and seeing how it makes it through the legislative process. And then right. you write about the process, like what actually happened or what had happened before. You, could, you can do something like that at a school, like at your school. Absolutely. And we have the resources for that. We also have, um, 
we support our students too. If they come to us with a project idea, I, I think it was the Student um, Council Alliance, like SCA maybe. When I was at New College, my first year, I want to get scuba certified. That was like my project idea for that year because I knew I wanted to do marine biology. Uh, getting scuba certified in January was a terrible idea. It was absolutely <laughs> freezing. Um, but I got to petition for funds for it because scuba certification can be kind of expensive. It was like around $400 and I got funded for it from the school wow. and I got scuba certified in, in the middle of cold January and it was awesome, but very cold. <laughs> how, many, how many prospective marine biologists come across your campus? Of course, on an admission cycle. We get a lot of students who are really interested in marine biology. Uh, and the really great thing about it is, A, we're on the bay. Um, B, we have that amazing marine research center, the Pritzker Marine Research Center, which actually uses water from the bay and recycles it through these two large silos that was part of a student's thesis project, wow. was building that. And that fuels the aquariums in the research center there. But we're also right next to Moat Marine Laboratory, which is on Longboat Key. It's about like 20, um, maybe 15, 20 minutes from campus. They do amazing shark research there. They uh, also do dolphin stranding, uh, marine mammal research. They have otters, they have alligators. We have one of the longest running studies of dolphin populations in our Sarasota Bay right there. And it's all like right at the students' fingertips. They can go out there, they can go on the marine research vessel. We get bioluminescence in the fall. So like oh, wow. the students will go out and splash in the bay and you just see like these blue ripples and it's just mesmerizing. It's such a great place for marine biology. And I can't uh, emphasize that enough. And what other majors draw, draw larger groups of students? Mm -hmm. We also have a really great computer science program a lot of our students are also interested in psychology. We have a really great psychology program. Um, and then we also have students who are interested in anthropology and archaeology. And we have a lot of professors who are still doing, making trips out and doing projects in those areas. And our students get to collaborate on those projects with them. I know a lot of my friends who worked, who did anthropology when they were here, they did a lot of Peru studies. So they got to go to Peru a lot, which was really cool. Um, we provide the students a lot of opportunities to really get into their area of study, not just read about it, but live it, you know, and I think that's a really, really cool, unique perspective. Now, the pandemic disrupted a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, were, were students on campus during the past fall and spring? We gave our students the opportunity um, to either be on campus and study fully remote or uh, be completely remote at home or be on campus and go physically to class. This was the first time we had ever offered online courses. And I really hope that as we move forward into the future that we start offering more online courses as well. Uh, I'm really excited about the opportunity for us to keep developing in that field. But we were very lucky as a college because we are so small that it was very easy to, you know, control that kind of spread and, and be more aware of it. And because our students are also, you know, honor students and very academically driven, they like to read and research. They were also really well-informed and on top of these things. So they were very eager to, to participate in these, um, you know, the, the mask mandates and, and stuff like that uh, with the conditions that were available on campus, our students were really eager to uh, participate in that. And our professors, because they care so much about the students, because they're so close to the students, they really went above and beyond. You know, they would have, I remember I had a, a student worker tell us that, I think it was like 10 minutes of, of one of their class, they would all just, stand up and they would do affirmation stretches and they would just talk about how they were feeling that day because our students are very supported by the professors here. And the professors did go above and beyond to, to make those online classes work, to check in emotionally and mentally with our students. And that's such a powerful thing, especially in such a unsure, scary time that the pandemic was. And, and, and New College has January 
terms as well. Yeah. Uh, were the John January terms online for the most part, or were they? Uh, um, some of our students did do online January terms. The thing about the the ISP January term is like it really is dependent on the individual. So the student has a lot of say in that. Uh, we do offer group ISPs, but the ISP stands for independent study projects. So during the month of January, that's an interim term. You're not enrolled in courses. You're not starting your spring classes then. You're working on your own project or you're working on a group project or you're collaborating with a professor. That really allows our students to get deep into what their interests are and explore what those interests are. Like I said, I got scuba certified one year. Um, another year I did seabird rehabilitation and I got to build prosthetic legs for cranes which uh, was absolutely terrifying. Cranes are very mean, but it was so cool because I, I don't think I would have ever gotten that opportunity if I had gone to like a big university like USF. I would have been you know, in a lab or an, another face in the crowd of hundreds of, of students in a lecture hall and not taking charge of my own evidence. So if, there's no, if there are no formal classes during those ISPs, then students aren't really paying tuition. You know, if they're not paying tuition for that. The uh, January term is included in, I want to say it's the fall okay. semester, okay. but you know, our students do still meet with their independent study project advisor during that time. Um, for some of the group projects, you know, those group projects will meet weekly or you're meeting weekly with your uh, advisor for your independent study project during that time. So it's not like we're just sending them out there with, with no guidance. Uh, there is still some structure to it. Usually their first year, we prefer them to do an independent study project on campus. Uh, and we really allow them to kind of choose whatever topic they're interested in. But in those later years, we give them a little bit more freedom to you know venture outside of campus, but we also want them to start honing their interests down so that they know when they get to the end of their time at New College, what that thesis project is gonna be. And that thesis project, I like to tell people is just like a very large version of the ISP. It's just a year long version of the ISP. Now, I'm, I'm curious about one thing. The school has always been known as New College. Yeah. Even though it's been around for what, about six decades. <laughs> did, did, did anyone ever, you know, ask about the name? What, what, you know, gee, did, was this, did this college just start off last <laughs> week? I mean, did they ever say anything? Right, absolutely. We get lots of questions uh, like, well, how new is new college? Or, well, you're not really new college. You guys should be old college. But, you know, when we came up with the name new, I think it was so much more than just we are a new college. Like, we just were formed. It, it's also a new, you know, approach to education. It's a new emphasis on the student as an individual, rather than like in those larger university systems where the students don't have as much of a say in their education and where students are evaluated on these um, grading scales, these A through F grading scales. We're really approaching education in a new way. We're really giving the student a lot of uh, feedback on how they're doing as a person or how they're doing um, academically. We're also encouraging the student to take charge of their own education. So while we may not be, you know, new exactly in age, I think that we're new in our approach. And I'm not sure if everyone would agree with me on that, but I truly take that to heart. I think that that is what still makes us a new college. Last, last question for today, when students cut, when you've gotten students to visit with their families, what makes them say yes? What makes them say yes? Well, I, I would definitely say, like I mentioned earlier, coming to campus is so important. Being able to see yourself in that environment is really what makes it all click. And also, you know, the value that that new college has for students. It's, you know, very cost friendly for the type of education that we're offering, you know, something that you wouldn't get at any other university in the state university system, unless it was a private school. And we do that at the public tuition price. But being able to see yourself on that campus, being able to see yourself in that classroom, 
We also allow our students to sit, sit in on courses too. They can meet one-on-one -on -one with professors because we're so small, we have a lot of opportunities that for the students to already meet those professors and make those connections before they're even set foot in the classroom, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really being able to see yourself on campus, see those campus resources, see those campus facilities, understand the true value of New College compared to other public colleges, other private liberal arts colleges. It's, that's what's the deciding factor there. I, I agree with you. I, one of the most important things I think about is particularly a liberal arts school because there's a culturally they're unique. Mm -hmm. You can go over to Eckerd, which is in St. Petersburg, and it won't be the same school. No, uh, and Eckerd's also a private school. So and so what I what I encourage and I hope people listening to this do is take two visits to these schools. Absolutely. One before you apply to make sure that you would like the, the academic approach, the people. The, the finances might work out for you, um, that you like the faculty that, that you meet. And then after supposedly that school has said yes, visit them again and confirm yeah. uh, that this is for you. The liberal arts colleges, it's probably more important because they have not only their own uniqueness, they have fewer people. Mm -hmm. And the most important things to get out of a college education, besides the degree, are really a, a network of friends who are going to be there for you, you know, for your life. And New College is a college that changes lives. Yeah. And also a direction for what you want to do. And uh, Jen Ann has covered that beautifully in this conversation. Jen Ann, thank you very much uh, for your time today. Thank you so much for having me, Stuart. It was such a pleasure speaking with you.